Let's talk a little bit now about Normandy and D-Day. If I remember correctly, the unit did not fight as one group, but were split up. Um, so take us just through the role that the ex-troop commandos played um, in preparation for D-Day. Right. So that was a very another very interesting aspect of this unit. First of all, it's very unusual that you have commandos who also do counterintelligence. But then while Brian Hilton Jones is training them and they get trained with other commando units. So other people besides Hilton Jones gets to see how capable they are. The British military starts to realize, wow, these guys are phenomenal. In fact, they're so good that we cannot risk having them fight as their own unit for two reasons. One is, you know, if there's like a roadside bomb, we might lose all of these guys and they're so capable and well trained. We don't want to lose them in a big group. The other thing that the British military realizes is that if they split them up and they put them in twos and threes in existing commando units, these guys will can be the tip of the sword in the commando units. They can be the leaders of all the other commando units. So when they land, these guys are going to be like the secret weapon that all of Lord Lovett's, it was all under Lord Lovett, his different commando units have that nobody knows are there. It's just... It's just remarkable because normally when you go into war in the military, you train with your unit, particularly of your commando for like a year. And these guys are sent to Southampton to wait to take the ships over to land at Normandy. They're told maybe one day before, look, you're going with this commando unit and you're going with that commando unit and you're going with this one. And this is unbelievable because all these commando units have known each other forever. They fought together. They've been trained together. And these guys are just thrown into the mix, mix basically told adapt and take over, you know, be leaders. Peter Masters, the artist from Vienna, as they're going to the ships, is told you're going to be in something called the bicycle unit, which was this, and I have photos of this crazy unit that they, devised of men who would ride on bicycles and land and make their way to Pegasus Bridge in front of everyone. Those guys had trained together for, you know, six months. He's given a bike. The bikes are foldable. They're heavy. They don't have brakes. I mean, you have to be really trained and he, he doesn't get any training. He tends up, you know, being a leader in the group as they all do. So what, maybe one day before they land, they get sent their assignments with different commando units. And then so when they're all landing in groups of threes and fours on different ships at D-Day, um, a typical story is of sort of why why they were so important and, and what they were supposed to do and why they did it so well was Monfred Gans, the Orthodox guy who becomes Fred Gray. It, that's his, no, his, his fake name that he uses during the war. Um, so typical, so he lands, I think it was with, I can't remember, it's 47 Commando or one of the, the commando units. They land at Sword Beach, and it's it's Monfred Gans who remembers the training. You have to get off the beach very, very quickly because, as we know about the Americans who landed on Omaha Beach, if you don't get off quickly, you're going to be slaughtered. So he remembers that. But as they're landing, they land sort of to the side, and there's complete carnage. And half of his entire commando unit is wiped out on landing. So... Monfort takes control of the rest. Remember, this is a guy who's just joined them like the day before. As he said, he has like a strange German accent. They don't know who this guy is. And he says to everyone who's survived, come follow me. We're going to get off the beach. And as he goes up the dunes, he immediately captures 20 Germans. And he has his gun out and he captures them. And he says in perfect but idiomatic German. So they, they're really discombobulated boys, you need to show us how to get off the beach because of course mines are laid all over the beach. And the Germans are so shocked that this German speaking British commando, they actually show him and lead him and the rest of his unit off the beach. And then they keep going to make their way to the first French town. So he did exactly what they were supposed to do and ends up saving the life of the rest of the commando unit. And that's what they did throughout the, all of the campaigns. 